Howdy folks, this is Sean Bagshaw from OutdoorExposurePhoto.com and Photo Cascadia. One of the questions that I've been getting a lot lately is how I go about sizing and sharpening my images for viewing on the web. These days the internet is the place where images are most likely to be seen, so it makes sense that we want to present our images on the internet to look as good as we can possibly make them look. We have some control over this in how we go about sizing and sharpening our images for web viewing, but some of it is beyond our control. For example, websites like Facebook, where we often like to share our images, go through a compression of their own when you upload images. So no matter what you do to your image before uploading it to Facebook, and no matter how good it looks, Facebook may degrade the look of your image, and that's beyond your control. This is true to varying degrees, from website to website, and even among different web browsers. So while we don't have a lot of control over how the image looks once we upload it to the internet, we do have some control over how we prepare and what we do with that image before we upload it to the internet. In this video, I'm going to look at a few different options that you have. First off, let's start with Lightroom. Lightroom offers a very simple and quick way to size and sharpen images for the web. All you need to do is select the image that you want to output for the web and then select export. In the export window you can select where the exported web size image will go and then you'll want to apply the file settings to be uh, the JPEG image format and the sRGB color space since sRGB is closest to what the web uses. The JPEG image quality can be set anywhere from 80 to 100. For the best quality 100 makes sense but I really don't notice much of a difference anywhere in between 80 and 100 and at a quality level of 80 your file sizes will be fairly small. Next you'll want to select how big you want the image to be on the screen. I usually just size my images based on the longest edge, so whether it's a vertical or a horizontal, it'll size the longest edge to this number of pixels. And for a lot of web images, I'm sizing to 1050 pixels. Some people like to have web images that are larger than that, and other people prefer a smaller web image so they're not posting as many pixels or as high resolution an image to the web. I find that 1050 seems to be kind of a good middle ground for me, but you can pick whatever size you prefer. The resolution really doesn't matter. You can set it to whatever you want, but that resolution only deals with how the image will print and the print resolution. Screen resolution is entirely based on pixels, so if I say it's going to be 1050 pixels wide, it's going to be 1050 pixels wide regardless of what this resolution is set to. So the image will look the same and contain the same amount of information on screen whether this is 300 or 72 or anything else. That takes care of the sizing, now we go to sharpening. In output sharpening we just select the sharpen for box and we're going to say that we want to sharpen for the screen and then we select an amount low standard or high I find that I really like the high sharpening setting the great thing about Lightroom is is it takes it from there based on knowing that it's going to be viewed on the screen and the amount of sharpening and the pixel dimensions Lightroom applies the correct amount of sharpening for that image and it's very simple you don't have to know a lot you just pick those three things and you're done there are some other options for the export that you have, but at this point we'll just say export and it's going to show us that image in Explorer. And if I open this up in the viewer, you can see that that is a nicely sharpened image. Now, of course, on the video, it's hard to see the exact amount of sharpening that we're talking about here because there's some video compression involved. So you're going to have to do your own test to decide if you're getting the, uh, the sharpening that you like out of any of these techniques. So that covers it for Lightroom. Now let's move over to Photoshop where we have many more options. The first thing I'm going to do is do a simple one pass sharpening using Photoshop's Smart Sharpen filter. So before I do that I'm going to make a duplicate of my image so that I'm sizing and sharpening the duplicate not the original. So I go to image duplicate 
and say OK. And here's my duplicate image. Then I'm just going to go to image, image size. And here, if I just select the image size that I want, again, it's that 1050 pixels on the long edge. Don't care about the resolution. And resample, I can either have Photoshop automatically choose the sampling style, or I also like to use bicubic if I want to choose it. And then I say OK and Photoshop resizes that image. The resized image, size down now, it's 1050 pixels on the long edge, uh, it's size for the web, but when you downsize like that, uh, you lose a lot of fine detail in the edges because to resize the image, Photoshop is actually throwing away pixels, and some of those pixels are ones that define edge sharpness. And now that that image is so much smaller, if I go to Filter, Sharpen, and use the Smart Sharpen tool, I can do sharpening on this, but the edges are largely lost already. So some of those real fine details, no matter what I do, I just can't bring them back. Now I can really try to over sharpen it. Um, and then eventually you end up with an image that just looks over sharpened and still missing the fine detail that I'm looking for. So this is where a two-step sharpening process comes into play. So I'm going to go back to the original and I'm going to create another duplicate. And now instead of sizing once and sharpening once, I'm actually going to size twice and sharpen twice. And the idea behind this is if I slightly over sharpen the edges at a slightly larger size than the final web size, I make those edges a little more apparent and make them stand out more than I really want them to. But when I then size down again, those edges will now have the right degree of sharpness and the finer edges that would have been lost are retained. So the first sharpening pass needs to be two-thirds larger than the final web size. So if I want to have my final output size be 1050 pixels on the long side, I'll multiply 1050 times 1 1.67. That gives me a pixel dimension of 1753.5 and I'll just round it to 1754. Then I'll say OK and Photoshop will size it to this initial size. Next I'll add some sharpening to the image at this size. So I'll go to Filter, Sharpen, and Smart Sharpen. And here, I, like I said, I'll slightly over sharpen the image, make it look sharper than I want it to look in the final. This looks pretty good. I usually keep a fairly low radius, but maybe about half a pixel radius and an amount pretty high, maybe up around 300 or more. So this is over sharpening, then I'll say OK. Now I'll make my second sizing pass. And this time we're going to size it right down to the size that we want it to be on the web, 1050 pixels wide. And we'll take that up to 100%. And now for the second sharpening pass, I will duplicate the background layer. And then I will go to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. And then I can add a very small amount, a very fine low pixel, only 0.2 on my radius, and a fairly low amount until I feel like it looks pretty good. And I might go a little bit more sharpening than I want to here. And then when I say OK, I can further adjust the opacity of that layer until I feel like I've got just the right amount of final sharpening. And almost always I find that I can get much better sharpening results using that two-pass sizing, two-pass sharpening method over the single sizing, single sharpening pass method. I find that I get the very best sharpening results from specialized software built just for the purpose of image sizing and sharpening. I'm going to share with you a couple different applications that work within Photoshop to provide specialized sharpening functionality. 
I'll provide links to where you can find out more about these applications and get them if you're interested. Those links will be in the blog text. The web sizing and sharpening application that I think does a really excellent job and the one that I use almost always are the web sharpening actions that come in Tony Kuiper's TK Actions custom panel. Now this panel provides a lot of functionality besides web sizing and sharpening. Web sharpening is just one of the things that it does. The panel comes with a whole bunch of different web sizes programmed in and it also has a choose option where you can choose a custom size that's not included in this list. So I'm going to go back to that original full size image and let's go back to that 1050 size. Now 1050 here, this will give me 1050 on the horizontal edge and the V next to it will give me 1050 pixels on the vertical edge. I want on the horizontal edge so that's what I'm going to use and just with a single click then it goes through a very complex and intricate uh, set of uh, sizing and sharpening steps and if we look at the history there we can see that this image has gone through many 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 steps so that's a very advanced action that does some very advanced and intricate sharpening it also automatically creates a duplicate of the image so that you're not sizing and sharpening the original and I find that that action really does a spectacular job and it comes uh, when you're done with the sizing it comes with several different layers uh, the two sharpening layers that you can then adjust opacity on to dial in just the amount of sharpening that you want for any particular image and then it comes with also a curves adjustment layer and a levels adjustment layer so that you can further adjust brightness and contrast and if you like curves more you could use a curves adjustment or if you like levels more you could further adjust with a levels adjustment so that's what those are there for another great sharpening application is one that was produced by a great Austrian uh, photographer and someone whose photography I greatly admire and Andreas has produced a, a script that you can use called Web Sharpener. And this is Andreas's script. You can select a variety of different parameters about the sizing and the sharpening. Here we'll just enter in that same pixel dimension that we want again. And it automatically maintains the, uh, the aspect ratio. And you can have it do certain compensations and pre-sharpening uh, through these checkboxes. And then you can also determine the, uh, the sharpening settings that it's going to use. And whether it's going to use a two-step sharpening process or a new multi-step process. Let's try the multi-step process. You could also add a watermark if you want to through his script. But then when I say start, it'll run the script which again is a very intricate series of sizing and sharpening steps to give maximum final quality. And I find that Andreas's script and Tony's actions both do a really excellent job. Slightly different outputs in terms of contrast and brightness and it depends again on how you go about compensating those. Andreas also has some uh, some layers in here where you can work with that a little bit more just like Tony's did. So you can really customize what that final image is going to look like. But they both, I feel, sharpen fine details equally well. Next I'm going to show you a sharpening solution that uh, is more of a complete overall solution. So I'm going to go back to that original main image and I'm going to duplicate it one more time so that we're working on the duplicate not the original and then we'll go and open this additional solution it loads into the automate menu and it's called photo kit sharpener 2 and it's by pixel genius and this is really a very complete photo sharpening system or solution this is good not only for sizing and sharpening for web output like the uh, other two methods I've just shown you. This actually has sharpening for all different types of printing and output from anything from glossy paper to canvas and it really um, makes sharpening much more intuitive and easy for people. So it's a, it's a really great all-around sharpening tool. Uh, so in this case we do want to sharpen for the web so we'll pick web and multimedia, multimedia is what we're going to sharpen for. And I'm going to select super fine edge, or actually maybe just narrow edge. You have 
several different choices there as well. And then I pick the size that I want. And then I say OK. And PhotoKit Sharpener sizes and sharpens the image based on those parameters. And again, does a really good job. Uh, somewhat different results than the previous two. On any of these, uh, it's probably a good idea to try them out and see which one works best for you. And I'm not going to demonstrate it, but I think a lot of people are familiar with Nick Software's uh, sharpening plugin. And it is similar in some ways to PhotoKit Sharpener in that it is really a complete sharpening solution. And it can help you size and sharpen for the web, but also for print on a whole variety of different types of print media. And now that we've created our sharpened and sized version, it's time to actually save it for the web. And this is important too. Saving your image in the proper format for web viewing is the critical kind of final piece to this. I like to use the save for web function in Photoshop. So if we go up to file and save for web, will take us to the save for web window in Photoshop. Also in Tony Kuiper's actions he has a button on the panel that takes us directly to that same save for web dialog. In the save for web dialog I'm going to select JPEG which is what we want for the internet. Uh, again the quality between 80 and 100 I find works fine for viewing. Um, somewhere around 80 you might notice a slight loss in quality. 90 and 100 I, they're almost indistinguishable but at a quality setting of 90 your image size will be slightly smaller than at 100%. So if web size or image size is important to you, you can bring it down a little bit. Uh, check optimized and I like to embed my color profile which is going to be sRGB right here and that way if my web browser or if the web browser that a person is using can identify color profiles this will enable the web browser to read it and more accurately portray those colors. I'm going to leave all my metadata in that image file. I don't need to do any sizing because this image has already been sized and optimized for the uh, for the web. So at this point when I've got these check boxes all how I want them, now I'm just going to say save and it'll ask me where I want to save that and I can save that into whatever folder I want to use and I can give it a name and then say save and it will save that image and at that point that sized sharpened image in the sRGB color space is ready to go on the web and I know that I'm going to have the best viewing of that image that I possibly can or at least that I've prepared it to the best of my ability and then beyond that if the website I upload it to does further compression to that it's out of my control but at least I know I've done the best I can do to get it ready. And that's it. So like I said, uh, check the, the notes below for links to these different web sharpening applications that I've shown you. And I hope that was helpful and has cleared up some stuff about preparing images to look best on the internet.